the other practical is the biometry. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, mention the size of every part because you have the complete discussion in your previous semester. You may be having a PPT from your teacher also. I'm just going to elaborate the method, how you can uh, examine the diameter yeah, 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 yeah. of the cervix, how you can check the length of the cervix, how you can check the uh, length of size the ovary of the or thickness of size of the live organ is basically known as biometry. biometry. Okay, so just I'm going to elaborate the procedure. Yeah. Yes. So if you want to look at the size of mm -hmm. any part of the reproductive tract, we can have questions at the end of the lecture. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the reproductive system, this can be of any system, any yes. uh, organ. If there is a change in the size, we should have, uh, you can say, we should be able to identify either this is the change that is due to some kind of the physiological change or maybe it is of the pathological. So if you know the normal value of, uh, uh, you can say, size of any part of the reproductive system of the heifer or the adult cow or the buffalo, you have the normal values in your previous lectures and you have a range that from this much size to this much size, this is the normal length of the cervix of that particular animal of the adult age or of the growing age, then you can compare. If it is of smaller of that minimum range, must be some kind of the abnormality. If it is of, of the larger size of the normal range, it means that maybe due to some physiological change, that can be the estrus cycle, that is the physiological change, or that may be the pregnancy, or that may be the postpartum period. These all are the normal physiological changes. Okay? Just you can look over here, this is the physiological change. The, these large uterine horns for this animal are normal because it is pregnant. If it is not pregnant and having such larger size of the uterine horns with some kind of the abnormal fluid inside, then it may be some kind of the abnormality. That's so this was only the, uh, you can say, only importance of the biometry. So if we look at the biometry of the cervix, that is the landmark for palpation in the bovine, okay, in cow or buffalo, but in case of mare and she camel, that is, that is not a landmark. Landmark is actually the point from where you can start. So the point from where you want to start should be easily approachable. In case of bovine, the cervix is easily approachable. Why? Because of its size, texture, that we can easily feel or shape. In case of mare, the cervix is smaller, plus it, it was entirely muscular, and it was not easy to locate the cervix at the very start of the palpation. So in case of she camel and mare, it was the ovaries. Because they are having the larger size of the ovaries normally as compared to the bovine, so we can easily approach the ovaries. From ovaries, we can examine the rest of the reproductive tract in case of mare and she camel. This is the species difference. But in case of bovine, the landmark is the cervix. So the, how you can measure the diameter length of this land, the landmark, the diameter of the cervix, you can measure just like that. Okay? I'm just, you can look at the picture of this uh, loop. I'm just making the loop of my thumb with the index finger and with the rest of the finger, I'm just holding the cervix. Okay? So I can measure. You have practiced in your previous classes, you have measured the half of this circle, how much centimeter is that? It's almost four centimeters, four centimeters. okay? I have measured with my uh, help of my finger because my this finger is almost seven centimeters in length, okay? And each digit is equal to 2.2 centimeters. Okay. So I just, if this cervix is going to get fixed or in this loop, it means that it is maximum of the four centimeters for me. It can be different with uh, some other guys that is having the larger size of the hand or the smaller size. The value can be variable, okay? But if a cervix that is not going to get fixed inside the complete loose loop, loop of my hand, it means that I am just trying to make this loop more shorter. How? I'm moving my index finger along with the thumb up. Why? Because every with every movement there is some kind of the, uh, you can say, uh, I can, uh, uh, sub, uh, you can say, get some value can be uh, eliminated from the four centimeter. It is of the maybe one centimeter, four from minus one, it is equal to three, then maybe 2.5, it is equal to 1.5, just like that. So right now, the uh, the diameter of the cervix of this animal is almost 2 centimeter and of this animal is 4 centimeters. okay? So, so this was the normal procedure, how you can check the diameter of the cervix. So, so you, you should have, have uh, information that either it's the normal or not. You have the information, what is the normal range of the diameter of for the adult cow or the for the heifer and it is going to be changed if the animal is pregnant or if not pregnant maybe some kind of the abnormalities or simply in aged animals the size will be different. Now if I say aged it means that the reproductive age. If two cows of the same age group 
but having the history one is having the history of three calving and the other is having no calving the reproductive tract normally will be larger of that cow that is multiple calving yes ma'am this is the diameter. if someone of you uh, out of you is going to try the diam to make the diameter in this pattern this is not you can mm. say the right way because we are trying to copy to, to mimic the procedure that we can perform in the live animal also on the table it is possible but when your hand is inside the rectum of the animal how you can move just like that it's difficult okay? so that's why this is a normal procedure to check the diameter as for the length we are going to measure the length of the cervix with the help of your index finger if it is larger than the index finger i will use the complete length of my hand i have measured the length it may be 12 cm so you can use it 10 or 12 cm so this may be the of the 10 or 12 cm the length of this cervix right now that was about the biometry of the cervix diameter and length okay length. then you can my get we are just going to skip the body of uterus and internal bifurcation we just will move toward the external bifurcation and now you can measure the diameter of the uterine horn how you can measure the diameter of the uterine horn you just going to pinch or fix the uterine horn from the from the site of attachment with the meso matrium and then the free loop of the uterine horn how much you can say it is covering the surface of, of my index finger i can say it is of the maybe 3 or 4 3 cm almost right now if i talk about the diameter of this one it is maybe more than the so i can identify if there is asymmetry if one is larger and other one is smaller at least i can differentiate okay? then if we talk about the length of the uterine horn you are just going to hold the inter, uh, intercarnal ligament mm -hmm. and uh, if you are going to check the length of the right horn or the left any one of the uterine horns you are just going to again extend your index because the index finger is basically the scale inside the animal we cannot take this scale. so this is the representative and we have practiced and measured the values on our hand or index finger so this is again to me the, this one part is of 7 cm and the remaining i will just fix from here and will measure the remaining part of the reproductive tract yeah. of the uterine horn this is almost 2 or 3 cm so collectively it is the 10 cm from the intercarnal ligament if we talk about the inside length this is known as the internal factor of the uterine <coughs> horn so actually this is now a 10 cm if you want to add the internal factor that may be uh, 7 or 10 cm usually we say 5 to 7 cm you can add in your measured value and you can specify that this is the internal factor yes. or if, we, if if you are not going to add it it's normal you just simply can say that without the internal factor this is from the intercarnal ligament up to the uterine uh, you can see anterior pole of the uterine horn so basically in clinics we just are more concerned about this part of the uh, uterine horn okay this was about the biometry of the uterine horn if you want to measure the length of the ovary again from the anterior pole to the posterior pole you just this is again the index finger is your scale and i am with the uh, with the help of my thumb i'm just measuring uh, how much surface is being covered by the ovary so this is to me it is almost 2 cm or i can say 2.5 2 or 2.5 i'm not going to say it as 2.1 or 2.2 because it is not possible for us to measure anything that is less than the five, uh, half cm 0.5 cm so you are not because it's not precise we are not having the actual scale inside or yes with the ultrasonography you can go for the precise measurements but here you can just simply cancel 2.5 or 2 so there is a margin of half cm the margin of error can be greater if the size of the structure is larger if i said this is a 10 cm i can say that can be 10 or 12 or 8 or 10 plus minus which is acceptable yes. but if it is only again 2 cm i cannot say that this is the 1 cm or 5 cm so far in shorter values shorter margin of error smaller margin of error if the larger value you can have the larger margin of error okay so this was all about